Okay, today then we're going to be setting up Pi Mega 5. Now, if you're wondering what Pi Mega 5 is, I think the name is pretty obvious. This is actually designed for Raspberry Pi computers, but this also works on Intel based computers too. But today we're going to be covering this for Raspberry Pi. I'm specifically going to be setting this up on a Raspberry Pi 400. But if you've got a standard Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5 or even a Raspberry Pi 500, this is all going to work the same. So we're going to need a few software files for this we're first of all going to need raspberry pi imager which i'm going to show you how to get in a minute we're also going to need to download the pi mega 5 torrent file and we're also going to need a particular kickstart rom which again i'm going to show you how to get in a minute so what we're going to do first of all is just gather up the software so you can find the torrent file for pi amiga 5 through the very awesome chris edwards restoration youtube channel so once you've downloaded that we're going to head over to Amiga Forever and you can Google this very easily. If you purchase the latest release of Amiga Forever 11, this is going to come with pretty much everything you need and it's a very useful package to have. All the files in there will also be compatible with various other platforms for Amiga emulation. So I totally recommend Amiga Forever 11. And finally, we're going to need Raspberry Pi Imager. Just go to download and once you've downloaded that that's it that's all we need and of course we're also going to need a micro sd card for this i'm going to be using a 64 gigabyte micro sd pny card and this works just fine so first of all let's actually talk about the torrent so you've downloaded a torrent and what you're going to do is end up with a zip folder you can extract this and it finally comes in weighing at 57.9 gigabyte let me just tell you that you don't need to extract this i've just extracted it just for something to do really so first of all then let's open up imager and we're going to set this up and we're going to go to english next i accept the agreement next and create desktop shortcut next and we're going to leave this on launch raspberry pi imager just go to finish Okay, cool. So we're ready to go now. So what I'm going to do is just plug in my micro SD card for this. And first of all, we need to select our Raspberry Pi device. So as we know, I'm using the Model 400. So I'm going to select Raspberry Pi 4 Model 400 and go to Next. On Choose Operating System, we're going to scroll right down towards the bottom and go to Use Custom. Now we're going to need to locate the image itself that we've downloaded through Chris Edwards' restoration torrent file. It's on my desktop and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the zip folder or the extracted ISO which I extracted from the folder. Now you can actually flash either one of these but if like myself you've extracted it already just go for the ISO file, double left click and we're going to go to next. And next up, we need to make sure that we're going to be flashing to the correct storage device. So just make sure you're actually flashing to the correct SD card. You don't want to be losing any important work on other devices you might have connected to your computer. Once you're happy that you've got the right SD card mounted, just left click on it and go to next. And next up, we're just going to hit right. And this is your last warning, so you do need to make sure that this is the right device that you're going to be flashing to. Once you've acknowledged that, just go to I understand, erase and write. And this is going to take around 10 to 15 minutes, so we're just going to hold our horses a minute for this to do its thing. Okay, so once this is flashed, it's going to go into a verifying process. This is entirely optional, really. So what I'm actually going to do is just go to skip verification. And that's it. So what we need to do now is press finish. And what we're going to do is eject the micro SD card and we're going to plug it back in. Okay, so once you've plugged your micro SD card back in, what we're going to do is just go and find that. So here we go, we got boot FS and this is the G drive. What we're going to do is just go inside of here and you're going to find a folder. This is kick and it's going to say your 1231 kickstart goes here. 
And if we just drag this across, it needs to be renamed as kick.rom. Now, this is saying that we need the 3.1 kickstart file. Now, because I've already got a copy of Amiga Forever, I've actually got my file right just here. So we're going to drag and drop that onto the SD card. And what we're going to do is totally rename this. So we're going to right click on that file, show more options, rename. And we're going to call it kick rom all in lowercase now let me give you a heads up if you go to plug in your micro sd card and your computer doesn't recognize it either restart your computer or perhaps use a converter to plug your micro sd card into a usb adapter so we're all pretty much good to go at this point what we're going to do now is safely eject the boot fs card and we're going to go to eject and we're going to take out the SD card and I'm going to see you on the Raspberry Pi. So before powering on my Raspberry Pi, what I'm going to do is just plug in the micro SD card first into the back and just make sure that's pushed in. Next up, I'm going to take the mains plug and just power it on. Okay, so on your first boot of this, what you're likely going to see is that it's expanding the file system. But eventually after that process is done with... We're now into Pi Amiga 5. Okay, so this is Pi Amiga 5. Now, I've just connected my Nintendo Switch controller to this. I did initially put in my Xbox controller, but it was giving me some issues. So let me just confirm a Nintendo Switch controller works just fine. This is actually wired, although you can actually set this up through Bluetooth. So this is the desktop itself. And of course, everyone wants to know about the games with Pi Amiga. You can easily access these by using the mouse and go into the bottom tray in the center of the screen and go into iGame. Now we got all of these games in WHD load format and these are very quick to boot up too. At the top of the window we got filter. Now if there's a particular game you want to search for just simply type in the game you're looking for. In my case I'm just going to type in fire and then I can select one of the games with fire in it. So I'm going to use fire and ice CD32 version. So double left click and it's also going to tell us before starting a game which button we need to press in order to exit or quit the game. With WHD Load 2 we also got the option to use cheats too but you need to be very quick to make sure you enable particular cheats before the game boots up. So here's Fire and Ice. I'm also going to make a note that sound is working fine with this setup too. Okay, now let me make you aware of a particular thing we can do whilst in game. In my case, because I'm using a Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard, I need to press FN plus the F2 button, which acts as F12 too, in order to come to the Amiberry screen. And from here, we can make adjustments whilst in game. So for example, some Amiga games might require the controller to be in port zero or port one. And as we can see under input section just here, we've got port zero which is currently set to system mouse which we always need a mouse in most cases and we also got port 1 which is acting as the controller port now we can swap these ports around just by left clicking on swap ports so if you find a game isn't reacting to your controller then it's always useful just to go here and swap ports over now if you're finding it doesn't recognize your controller either then what you need to do is just go to either port 0 or port 1 in drop down and from here you should find your controller like I was saying my Xbox Series controller was being detected but I couldn't get any output from it so I switched over to literally my switch controller and it's working fine now if you find your controller is detected but your game isn't controlling it's also worth your while just to go down to the drop down option where it says default and swapping it over with something like CD32 pad or analog joystick in my case default is working just fine now to exit out of this game i need to press the f10 button and here we go this brings us back to pi mega so let's check out something else if we go down to i demo 
we've got lots of different scene demos just here. Demos are literally what very clever coders come up with in order to push the Amiga to its limit. So let's check one of these out. I'm going to go for Bagon. Again, double left click. These are in WHD loads. Okay, so press F10 to come out of there, and I'll leave it to you to go through the demos, but there's some really fascinating stuff in there. So we're going to open up another game again by going to iGame, and for this I'm going to open up First Samurai A1200 version. And again, just like the other game, we got plenty of cheats just here, and we also got the prompt saying we need to press F10 to quit. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Amiberry window again. Again, I'm pressing the FN and the F12 button. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5, then obviously you're likely going to have a larger keyboard, so you won't need to press the FN button. From the Amiberry menu, we can actually go to display. And from display, we can add scan lines to the game if we want. So if I just hit scan lines and I go down to resume... We can also go to scaling method just here, which you can find under display. Now, if I put something like smooth on, the game is going to look slightly different. Now, it's probably not showing too well with the camera, but I can guarantee you it looks slightly different by using this option. Again, if I go to scaling method and put it to pixelated, and I'm going to put line mode to say double fields and go to resume. So really the options for video settings are pretty much endless just there. You can have a lot of fun if that's your type of thing. Now we also got a sounds tab just here. And if you find that you're not getting any sound through Pi Amiga, it's always worth your while going to sound and just selecting device at the top. In my case, it's automatically detected it. But if you don't get any sound, hopefully that option will become available just by dropping it down. And it's always important to save your settings. So if we go to configuration, tab now that I've got my switch controller enabled and I've applied some video settings all I need to do is just go to configurations and hit save now my progress has been saved and every time I boot up Pi Amiga those settings should still be in place now we can actually switch between Pi Amiga 5 and the Linux desktop hiding underneath Pi Amiga 5 to do this all we're going to do is press the FN and F12 button and from here once we got Amiberry open we just go down to quit and that's going to bring us back to the underlying Linux operating system. And you can do all sorts of different changes here, such as adding your Bluetooth controller. Very simply, just go up to the Bluetooth icon at the top right hand side. And from here, you can add Bluetooth devices or whatever you need to do. If we want to go back into Pi Amiga 5, you'll then see a desktop shortcut just here. Pi Amiga 5, just double left click on it and that's going to boot us straight back into Pi Amiga. And you're also going to find with Pi Amiga, every time you boot up, you're likely going to get a different wallpaper like you probably noticed throughout this video. Now, in addition to games in demos, we've also got a music player just here. Again, we can actually access this from the tray at the bottom center. Now for those of you who followed my guide for Amiga Game Selector the other day, you're probably wondering what's the difference. Well, you can see there's a big difference here with how both of these systems work, and it's really down to preference. Now on the left hand side, we got a games icon, and from here we got lots of different games even still. If we go to Doom, we got a Doom. If I click on this, and from here, we're going to need to select a resolution. I'm going to go for the UAE 32-bit RGBA. If I go to OK, 
And here we go, we're now into A Doom. And again, I'm using my Switch controller to play this game and everything's working just fine with this. And to quit out with this Doom game, I'm gonna press F10 and press Y on my keyboard. And there we go, we're straight back into Pi Amiga. So there's plenty of games here to go through which are even hidden away. And by hovering over the very top and by pressing the right button on your mouse, we've then got lots of different options. For example, we go down to backdrops, which you can find under settings, and we can go to pictures. And you can then change your wallpaper. Like I say, just remember to save all your progress within Amiberry. We've also got iBrowse, which is a browser. Now, this isn't a free browser, you do need to pay this, and I believe the demo version of this, which is included, is 30 minutes. But in order to use this, you're going to need to connect to the internet. So what we're going to do is connect to the internet just by Xing out of Pi Mega. So to do this, FN again and F12, and I'm gonna go down to quit. And from here, I can then use this system in order to connect to the internet. So from the top right hand side on the purple bar, I'm going to select my network. And of course, you're going to need to enter in your passwords in order to connect. So once you're connected, it should say that you're connected to your Wi-Fi network. We can then go back to Pi Mega 5. And once your connection is set up, we can then simply go down to something like Firefox and we can then start using the internet through Pi Mega. So for example, with Firefox, I'm going to just type in Google. And there we go, we're now into WHD load support. And that's about it for today's Pi Mega 5 setup guide and walk around. So hopefully I've covered a lot of potential questions in there, such as how to save your progress, how to connect controllers, how to connect to the internet. And if you're still not feeling Pi Mega 5 and want something straight to the point for Amiga gaming, then I'm gonna leave a link in my comment section so you can check out how Amiga Game Selector works. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro content here on my channel just jamie again thanks for watching and until next time stay retro